My guest today is a former First Lady of Cebu and Cebu City Councilor Margot Vargas Osmeña. Hi, Hi Madam. Thank Hi, you. Hi, Jiggy. Thank you. Thank you for being here with us uh, this afternoon here at F Cafe. Thank you, and my pleasure to be with you. And thank you for inviting me. Margot Osmeña has been Margot Osmeña for decades now, right? Literally. Yeah, literally, <laughs> literally on that piece of paper. Yes, it's been Margot Osmeña for over a few decades now. Before? You have been the yeah. uh, well-loved. Um, oh, thank you. First Lady of Cebu for decades now, um, but. Little is known about you before uh, you became the first lady of Cebu, before you met Tami Osmeña. Maybe you can give us a story, a little bit, a short version of who, who Margot is before she met Tami Osmeña. Well, Jiggy, I come from a very large family. I'm the eldest of 11 children, one of whom we all came one after the other, so much so that in school, when every time we had what we called open house, like when the parents could come, my classmates would always say every year, Margarita, your mommy's buntis again. <laughs> <laughs> it was like she was always pregnant. But it was fun. And not only that, I not only come from a very large family um, with siblings, but I grew up in a compound with cousins. So all in all, not all of whom lived in the same in the compound, but we had 65 first cousins on my father's side alone, and 30 plus on my mother's side. Wow. Yeah, and, and um, <laughs> in our compound, it was really like a little village. So it was nice. You know, it was, um, I have very pleasant, bright, happy memories. Of course, children being children, and you know, your, your cousins can become also your Contra yeah, yeah. But no matter what, we were always raised as a family. And um, it was fun. It this was this fun. compound was this in Cebu City? No, I'm oh. from Manila. Oh, from Manila, okay. Um, our compound was in Mandaluyong. Oh, okay. My, right. my Lolo, my Lolo Jorge, mm. was one of the first people, settlers of Mandaluyong. Oh, okay. It used to be like green grass. Correct. Right. <laughs> 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 you mean the entire Mandaluyong? Yeah, it okay. used to be like in the boonies you okay. know? yeah and you look at it now no okay and so he he he, uh, he built the compound there in mandaluyo in mandaluyo okay. in, in fact a uh, uh, very curious part of this is that the compound was quite big jiggy so part of the compound was in mandaluyong we had a little bridge inside the compound it was it's large i think we had 40 plus houses, mm -hmm. like a small subdivision actually. And then there was a small bridge that crossed a, a very narrow river. Okay. And when you cross that bridge, maybe it's about two car lengths, so it's not very big, very long. The other part of the bridge is San Juan. <laughs> so Mandaluyong and San Juan, the compound. So you were okay. born and raised in Mandaluyong in Manila? Okay. That's another thing. No, I was born in Japan. Okay. All right. <laughs> Japan? Okay. Yes, I was born in Japan. All right. Yeah. So, yes, but I was raised, yes, in Manila. So how many uh, years did you stay in Manila? Manila? Uh -huh. All my life. Okay. Until, until, until Tommy. Okay. Until so, Tommy. Um, uh, when did you finally meet uh, Tommy? the former mayor, Tommy Osmeni? Okay, I, I have said this story before, but mm -hmm. it's always the go hall. I was in high school. Uh -huh. Okay, Jiggy, I only had one school all throughout my life. Okay. That was formerly Mary Mill College. Okay. Now known as Miriam. Yeah. Okay. And I spent 16 years of my life from kindergarten to fourth year college in Mary Mill, My only school. So my only medal was loyalty. In high school, as was the um, practice, tradition, way before, we had a school fair mm -hmm. and um, I didn't have a way home so I asked one of my friends my one of my best friends I said Hilda her name was Hilda I said Hilda can I hitch with you can I can you take me home because yeah then she said I have to ask my boyfriend well her boyfriend was Tommy <laughs> <laughs> okay all right, all right, all right. that's how I met uh, Tommy okay when she was he, he was the boyfriend of my friend okay but um, 
But we can go out naman right away, huh? <laughs> so it was a few years, maybe two years okay. after. Okay, right, right. And so when I started going out with Tommy, I told I told Hilda, I said, Hilda, I'm going out now with Tommy. I said, oh, okay. I made sure the boy for me. That's how I met him. So was he already uh, Tommy Osmani, the politician, when you met no, Tommy? No, not at all. Okay. We were, remember... Um, uh, this was still high school, of course. Yeah, yeah so he was just... Finish, he was in school here. Okay. He finished high school here. What was he doing in Manila, school. if you don't mind? Well, he, they really lived there. Ah, also. And Tommy okay, was okay. Tommy was sent here. Well, I, I will say it na lang. Uh. Anyway, it's the truth. <laughs> Tommy was in La Salle. Uh. Well, he was in Ateneo, the name is La Salle. And I think he got in first year high school. He didn't make it. Okay. Because he failed okay. in um, catechism. <laughs> and... <laughs> yeah. So his very father, typical, right? <laughs> his father got very upset okay. with him. Serhing, uh, Serhing, yeah. right. for failing. And <laughs> you know, his only siblings. He comes from a family of five, and all his siblings all went to high school in England. Yeah, they yeah. were boarders, yeah. and Tommy was sent to Cebu. Uh -huh. <laughs> so he was sent to because he was being a bad boy. Yeah, because he failed. <laughs> he went to. They sent. Uh, his father sent him to Secretary. Okay. And um, not only did he send him here, he was a boarder in Sacred Heart. Okay. Imagine. Uh -huh. And his their house was just like two blocks away. Uh -huh. But his dad made him a boarder. Okay. So when I met Tommy, it was um, maybe about that time, uh -huh. or maybe I don't know. But when I we met, no, uh -huh. <laughs> was um. Right after in 1969, okay. that I remember because that was the year that his father ran against yeah. Marcos for president. For president, yes. It was after the election that mm -hmm. we had, you know, we got to see each other again. Right. And then the rest is history, right? The rest is history. <laughs> there was a time that uh, Tommy uh, stayed in the United States okay. for a while. Yeah, that's another. Maybe you can tell us uh, that yes. part of, of your life. Okay, so. We started going out and we went steady. I don't, do you still use that term, steady? Steady, I, I guess. No more na, no? <laughs> no more na. No more na. I don't hear that. That's an old word, steady. But yeah, we went steady. Okay, okay. So, <laughs> so, in 1972, um, he told me that, he said that he had to go to the States to okay. accompany his parents because his father said he was very seriously hurt the year before. You know, you guys were not born um, in that bombing in Plaza Miranda. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he was one of those most seriously hurt. Mm -hmm. And he had to go to the States because he still had shrapnels mm -hmm. in his body. So he This was before martial law, right? Yes. Oh. That was 72. Mm -hmm. Now Tommy said, I'll be away for three weeks. Mm -hmm. Well, in 10 days after he left, martial law was declared. Mm. Okay. So he couldn't go back. Mm. So I did not see him for 8 years. Mm. 8 but, years. But you were steady. Not so steady. <laughs> <laughs> so wait a minute. No, so no, no. there was an 8 year gap, right? Did you have like a, what we call a long distance relationship? Was that LDR? What, LDR? I, I just found out what LDR is. <laughs> so and so, did not you have that? In the sense, not in the way Sigogo you see it now, okay. but we, we, we never really lost touch. Okay. But if you're asking me, were we still going steady? No. Okay. He had a life there uh. and I had a life in Manila. All right. And when I graduated from college and I started to work mm -hmm. and um, you know, I... In Cebu I, already or Manila? Manila. Still Manila. Still Manila. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Manila. Sorry. I only okay. came to Cebu when I followed my heart. Okay, okay. Oh, no. Anyway, but we kept in touch. We knew what was happening to each other. But remember, Tigger, this was the time when there was no cell phone. Yeah, there was no internet, there right? There was no internet. The, I mean... So you would write letters to each other? Or not, make long-distance phone calls? Not so, not so often. Uh -huh. Writing letters? Uh -huh. Not so often. Long, overseas calls? Kind of mahal. Mm, telegramma? <laughs> you, hello, Tommy, stop. Hi, Tommy, how are you? Stop. You know, no, not really. <laughs> but uh, uh, telephone calls were very expensive. Yeah. And you had to call the operator right. and say, I'm going to make an, you know, like make an appointment. So, but eight years passed. And then martial law, no, martial law was still ongoing. But the travel ban was lifted. Mm. There was a travel ban. Against uh, Sarhin? No, a travel ban for all. For no everyone. One, no one could leave. No one could leave the country during martial law. Okay, I didn't know that part. 
Wow. Know, kasi you're not born. <laughs> and then, and then um, yeah, no one except, you know, as, as, as always, those yeah. who know, yeah, yeah, you know yeah, what I mean. Yeah, yeah. But for the ordinary citizen, uh. no, you can leave. Mm. But then sometime in 1980, I think, uh, it was lifted, mm -hmm. the travel ban lang, not yeah. martial not law. Not martial law yet. Okay. So that being said, I was already working, and I was working in a very good job in a good company. And I said, I want to go to the States, you know? And so I, I applied for my own visa. You know, at that time when you apply for your visa, not, not by appointment, mm. you talagang line up there mm. in Rojas Boulevard. Mm. I went at 4 o'clock in the morning, mm. you know? And the, the consul did even want, you know, when the consul saw me, okay, I must have been like 30, not even 30, 31, or whatever. And then he looks at me and he says, Wait, so, so this is when Tommy came back from no, the United no, States? No, no, no. Tommy was in the States. Uh, who, who's looking at you? The, the guy consul, from the consul. The okay. consul. I'm right. applying for my Sorry, visa okay. on my own. Right. I didn't want to ask anybody's help, including my father. Uh -huh. I said, no, I'll do it on my own. Okay. Sure. He lined up. So I got, it was my turn. So the consul who, I, I mean, you know, by chance, he was the one who was going to interview me. Kind of young too. Then he said, oh, you're exactly the kind of person we don't want to give visas to. <laughs> and I said, why not? Then, you know, he kind of flattered me, yeah, okay? Because uh, you're this and that and this and that. You're, with your killer smile, uh, you know? <laughs> then I said, wow. I said, and, and that's that's something you'll take against me? Siyempre, <laughs> I'll play the game na, di ba? <laughs> so, suffice it to say, uh, make the long story short, did you get your visa? One month. One month. Single entry. Okay. He said, I'm going to take a chance on you. For one month? I said, okay. I said, you won't regret it. So I went, I left. Okay, going back to Tommy. So I told Tommy, that, that's one time I called him. I said, I'm going to the States. Okay. He said, okay, I'll meet you. Okay. So he met me. He, uh, okay. Parang, parang naman the eight years did not happen. Yeah, <laughs> you, yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, like yeah. in the movies. So you picked up where you left off? Yeah. Sort of, yeah. yeah. Kind of okay. like that. Okay. Yeah, kind of like that. And, um, like I often say, but I, when he met me, he said, you've changed. I said, before I was very, you know, anything he tells me. And now I remember I was already, I had my own career. I, I was working. So I grew up. Which was good. And um, yeah. So he, then he said, you know, then we got, we got to exchanging things and this and that. And I said, no, I got to go home first because I cannot just leave. So I, I came back and I called up that concert mm. and I said I'm back. After one month? Yeah. With Tommy in tow or just no, you? No, no. Tommy okay. couldn't come home. He, he would have, he, there was an arrest order. Uh, there was still a travel ban or the no, arrest order? No, he was, there was an arrest order. For him or for Serhi? family. Ah, the entire, the, the entire yeah, family? Yeah, remember, okay. search, well, Kassir, search escaped uh -huh. from, from Bonifacio. Uh -huh. There was, yeah. Okay. So, couldn't come home. So at uh, that time when Tommy finally came home, when the travel ban was lifted or the arrest no, no, no. was... What, Tommy when came was this? home when martial law was... finally was lifted, okay. After Ed's... Uh, ah, all right, all right, all right. No, but before that, prior to that, Jiggy, we came home, uh, we were already married in 1984 because mm. his dad died. Okay. And, he, and their father had always asked to be buried here. He had been away for... 18, I don't know, 16 something years and he always wanted to come home. It was very sad that he came home already, you know, to be buried. Oh. Okay. And to, they asked permission, Tommy and Basa, they asked permission from then Defense Minister and Rilo mm -hmm. if they could come and bury their dad. Mm -hmm. And um, to give credit where it's due, um, Minister and Rilo said, yes, you can come home to bury your dad, but you leave right after. Mm -hmm. So Tommy was able to come home to bury his dad. And I came home also with him because we were married now by that time. And um, I was even praying not to mm. again. Mm. But we stayed like maybe a week at mm. the most. In, like, in Cebu? In Cebu. Okay. In Cebu. Ibalik na din mo sa States yes. again. After burying the dad. This was 84, right? 84. So 86, uh, the Edsa Revolution happened. So Tommy came back. Tommy started coming home. Okay. Because he wanted to see what it was like. Because okay. he was free to come home okay. already. But I stayed behind mm -hmm. in the States because I had a two-year-old son, mm -hmm. right? 
And then I would hear things like, especially from Samuel Smenya, who was then living in the States. And one time he just came to pass by our place, our apartment, and said, My God, you better learn how to sing and dance. I said, Sing and dance? I mean, <laughs> he said, Your husband's gonna run for me, you see. I said, What? And Tommy wasn't, Tommy wasn't there. He was here. Uh -huh. I, that one, I didn't call him. I said, what is this you're running from? <laughs> I'm thinking, ah, this could be it. And then, so he did come back, of course, to the States. And he was going back and forth. And finally, he told me, yeah, he was thinking of running. But then he told me, Jiggy, but you stay behind in the States, you and Miguel. Let's see how it goes. You don't come home. Don't come. This, remember, this was not my home. I'm from Manila. Don't come back with me back. But I told him, even then, I said, Tommy, if you're going to run for mayor, we'll come home with you. I, I, you know, this is not like, I'm your wife. <laughs> so we came home. So you eventually came home and he, he won. He won and won. won. What year was this again? He won 80. in 80. He, he sat first time as 80. 88. 80. Okay, this is two years after Edsa Revolution. Yeah. So you have been uh, the first lady of Cebu for, for a long, long time, right? No, naman. There were interruptions also. But it was a long time. Maybe you can uh, describe to us uh, okay. what it was like to be first lady of Cebu City. You know, Jiggy, I never really saw it that way because to me, and up to now, Basta I'm the wife of Tommy. Mm -hmm. If Tommy happens to be the mayor, then I'm the wife of the mayor, mm -hmm. diba? If he's not the mayor, I'm still his wife. Okay. But okay, going back to answering your question, he became mayor. So yes, technically, no, I was known as the first lady. <laughs> There's no handbook on that. Yeah, of course, yeah. No. There's none. Mm -hmm. And remember, I could not speak Cebuano. Yes, okay. I had no friends here. I had none. Okay. I mean, very, very few. I have no relatives mm -hmm. here. I mean, whatever relatives I have are in-laws. Mm -hmm. But, you know, and I'm so used to having my family around me. But, maybe God gave me that the gift mm -hmm. of being friends, you know, with people. And anyway, um, what was expected of me? I did know. But it was Tommy who set the pace for me. He said, you know, my God, um, many people, uh, various organizations, groups would ask you to to be with them, maybe to be in the beautification or the cleanliness or whatever, you know, all very good causes. But he said, I, just, I want you to concentrate only on one thing. You know, I said, what? Mm -hmm. The children. He, he was the one who told me that. Okay. And I didn't even know what he meant. Mm -hmm. What do you mean the children? What children? <laughs> The three children. Okay. Right. Then I had to find out who are the three children. Because, Jiggy, when I was growing up, which is a long, long time ago, there were there was no such phenomenon mm. of the three children. There were children in the streets. We used to call them batang kalye, mm. but they don't live in the streets. Mm. They they would be playing there, but in the evenings they'd go home, whatever kinds of homes they have. But they had a home. Suddenly you had this phenomenon of children actually sleeping, surviving in the streets, barely. So that became a challenge. So I said, okay. I was very lucky and blessed that when that became supposed to be my focus, I found out that there was already a Cebu City Task Force on Street Children, which was initiated by UNICEF. So when I found that out, I, I I got to find out also who were the people there. I asked them if I could join them. Okay. Why will I do something that I don't know? It's best to, for me always, I always have that enough. If you don't know, then you ask. Then you ask the people who know. So they, were, they had been doing this for maybe two, three years already, committed to the children. So I said, can I just join you? They were very, they were not very receptive of me. Number one, they didn't know me. Number two, I'm the wife of the mayor. You know, the wife of the mayor. Maybe all I want to do is have my praise release, you know, <laughs> my picture picture. 
but I had to, not that I had to, but I, 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 I was able to show, maybe to show them that this was really something I wanted to do. And in fact, I asked them, can you tell me what to do and how to do it? Then they said, you know, you're the wife of the mayor, you can do anything. I said, then you tell me what to do, <laughs> right? So our first project was the Pari Andra concept. So you have been uh, asso associated with the oh, Task Force plus years. on street children for, for 30, plus 30 plus years, years now. Yeah. So you, you, were, you, were, you, you were the first lady for a long, long time. Maybe there are several interruptions, but more or less, of maybe like two, three decades as first lady of Cebu. Uh, was it was it was it difficult to be first lady of Cebu? What no. what, what was the what was the uh, no? It's not difficult. What was the, the 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 worst part of being first lady? The worst part? Nothing. What's the best part? Nothing. Also. Okay. I uh, you know I think Jiggy is that you don't take yourself seriously. Mm -hmm. You take what you do seriously, but you don't go around thinking I'm the first lady. I'm the what? Mm -hmm. No, no. Because you know what? That's okay. all passing. That all comes with the job. You were probably with uh, with Tammy most of the time, or some of the time, while he was mayor, right? Maybe you can describe to us, uh, uh, based on your eyes, based on your experience as first lady, what do you think was the most challenging, most difficult time for you when you were looking at what was going on around you uh, um, get in the city? Okay, okay, that's a good question. Number one, I promised myself, women, I didn't know what the first lady entailed. Okay. I promised myself two things. I would never embarrass my husband mm -hmm. and I would not embarrass the book. That's it. Mm -hmm. And then I would I also reminded myself that no one voted for me. Mm -hmm. So I had no place being in City Hall. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. I mean my husband was voted into office. Mm -hmm. I, I came as the addendum, mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> But nobody voted for me, okay. and I didn't see the ano. And I had a son whom I was raising, who was only three years old when his papa became mayor. So he grew up being the son of the mayor, and you know that's not sometimes that's not such a good thing, because if you don't, you're not careful. They become very entitled. So th that's the most challenging. So uh, as as first lady, what do you think, in your observation, was the most challenging part? of being a city mayor from your perspective my husband okay from my perspective yeah, yeah. and tommy being my husband yeah, yeah. and tommy being the mayor yeah. okay because i can only speak from yeah, that exactly. angle i cannot speak for other mayors except for my husband who happened to become the mayor mm. tommy is really you know you hear ah, can, so tommy is strict though mm. correct mm. he really is strict mm. but he's strict with everybody mm. he does not choose mm. and then Tom is serious. He's extremely serious. Mm -hmm. Tommy does not, you know, he, he, he does not see the little things because he's so focused on whatever his focus is at the moment. His vision is crystal clear mm -hmm. to him. And because of that, and because he's a very forthright person, mm -hmm. Tommy doesn't say what he doesn't mean. Mm -hmm. And if he doesn't mean it, he won't say it. Some people cannot take that. Okay. They cannot take now. So you what's know, so difficult about that? People, people insult him. Okay. They cannot understand him. Okay. In the beginning, I found it hard, mm. hard. But now I'm so used to it now. So, but during your time as 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 first lady or the wife of Tommy Osmania, did you feel now? Uh, uh, I'm still his wife, huh? Yeah, of course, still is. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, did you feel that more of the politics? I don't no. like politics, no. but there are a lot no. of mudslinging no. and all no. that stuff. No. Did you no. like what you were seeing? No, I don't necessarily like it, but it's something that remember you're being, in, he's being in politics, mm. and now my being in politics is not something that is forced upon you. Yeah. It is a choice you make. Yeah. You actually go to the people and you ask them to vote for you. Mm. You wake up early in the morning. You go through this uh, campaign period where. You have a hard, you know, it's not really an easy time. Yeah. You wake up early, you yeah. go there, you yeah. do things yeah. that you're not, you don't normally do. Why? For only one reason. Because you're asking for their vote. Mm. You're asking them to trust you, right? Right? Mm. So they do. When you win, that means they did. Okay. How can you complain? And how can you say, I don't like politics? You got yourself into it. If you I asked you that like question, politics, Margot. Then uh, get out. Uh, whether you like what you were seeing, because it, it was fairly 
recent, right? You did not, uh, you were not into politics. Uh, uh, for me. For you personally. Right, you're uh, right. You're you only came to politics fairly recently, right? Right. About uh, maybe like a decade ago? Yes, exactly. Ten years ago? About so 2010. Why, why, why did I do why that? Why did you get into okay. politics uh, later? Why, why did not, I run? Yeah, why did you run for office? Why didn't you do earlier. it earlier? Yes, you know? yeah, good yeah. question. Yeah. Because the opportunities did come up okay. and I was asked like, I guess, I guess, you know, like it, the way it is that when, when, when the politician cannot run anymore because of term limits, they yeah. look at the spouse, yeah. 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 the child, the brother, the sister, mm. and, and that, that happened too. Mm. But at that time, no way, mm. di ba? Then in 2010, when Tommy couldn't run anymore for mayor because he had termed out three terms, that, that came up again, mm. you know? And I said no. Mm. And Tommy said no. Why because, did you say no? Because I didn't want it. Okay. <laughs> Simple. <laughs> and Tommy also said no uh, because I never thought about it. Uh, it was never something in my mind. So what was the time when you finally decided to throw in the hat? No, okay. Then why did I run for council? Yeah, yeah. Because in 2010 yeah. I ran for yeah. council. Yeah. Why was that? Because because there was this petition, you know, by the majority of the barangay captains, 60 of them out of 80 who really signed a petition, which I still have, asking me to run for mayor because Tommy couldn't run anymore. But Tommy said also no because he had promised it to Mike. And Tommy keeps his promises. So, but, you know, they were kind of noisy, okay? So one morning I just told Tommy, okay, I'm gonna run. He said, what? <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then, and then and then he said you're gonna run okay then i said yeah for counselor oh, he said, oh why pa quiet na lang sila oh. i said quiet na lang sila at least i'm there oh. that's why i ran so this was 2010 then yeah. so i ran for three terms okay Ayan. now why am i running now no no I'm not yet not old. yet i am i am curious chronological i'm curious um <laughs> there's never been a female a woman mayor in Cebu ever ever why, ever. why, why do you think that is that why, why do you think that is so I don't know maybe it wasn't time I, I really don't think about these things I don't I don't overanalyze you know mm -hmm. um, why why not maybe nobody offered or maybe it wasn't time there were already other women who ran for mayor right before not that I know who um, um, was Mary Andy. Mary Andy, yeah yeah correct yes, yeah yes, Mary Andy. against Tommy okay so you have no, uh, uh, you don't feel strongly about how different, uh, you, what kind of difference you can bring on the table? I, I what do. kind of uh, um, sort of different perspective from maybe perhaps a woman's perspective I do. perhaps? I do, because a woman, whatever it is, you can do the job just as well, mm -hmm. maybe even better. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, but in times like this, when there is a lot of People are suffering, mm -hmm. okay? People are... Uh, it, it's time. Mm -hmm. It's time. It's time maybe... It's time that a woman comes in. Mm -hmm. Will people accept that? Let's see. Mm -hmm. Let's see. It's a different perspective now. When something happens in your home, in your own house, who do you go to your mom? When, when it's... When you feel that things are not going right in your house, who do you go to? Your mom. When somebody's sick in your house, who, do you, who takes care of you? Your mom. Maybe that's how I see it. That's how I see it. What kind of... Uh, I don't want to use the word brand, right? Uh, but what do you think uh, is the uh, Margot uh, Vargas Osmeña type of, of leadership? Uh, as opposed to... Uh, Thomas? Tommy Osmeña, okay, right? Good. Because I'm sure, um, <laughs> although you have been first lady for a long, long time, you're also Cebu City Councilor for a decade now. So you already, you already have your own way of doing things, right? Yes, how different exactly. is it? Exactly. Uh, how is how different is it? You know, uh, from from your husband. You know, Jiggy. You know, life is a, my life has. Okay, I have much more to look back at mm. than to look forward to because of my age, and I will accept that, mm. and I'm grateful for that. Mm. And there are many dots in my life. Mm that many have connected mm. 
but some are not connected. But as I got older and now, I find, oh, no, now they're connecting. Okay? W what do I mean? We may have the same goals. You and I may have the same goals. Okay, Tommy and I may have the same goals. We, all, we both want to reach the same point. But we have different ways of doing it. Tommy's a very straightforward, you know? Go. Rigid would be the word? Rigid? Not rigid. Um, focused. Focused, okay. Extremely focused. Okay. Extremely. Like many men. You know, many men cannot multitask. <laughs> many men cannot okay. multitask. I have the same yeah. approach, but I can stop yeah. a little and say, oh, how are you? Yeah. Yeah. And I can do it smiling. Yeah. Tom is not known for smiling. Okay. It doesn't mean he doesn't have a heart. Okay. You know, he, in fact, he has a very big heart. As actually. opposed to that, how, what is the Margot style of, of leadership? I don't know. I, I think I'm, I'm quite clear also, but I can do it with a smile. And remember, I'm the eldest of 11 children. Okay. So that being, that being the case, I was already raised as the eldest okay. and my papa and my mommy were very you know being the eldest in, in the Vargases you're the boss yeah so you were already pang raised as the leader of your siblings okay let's give uh, your uh, being Margot Vargas Osmeña brand of, of leadership if you want to call it that uh, a, a, let's have a sort of a mental test okay oh, no. uh, COVID-19 um, how will uh, what needs to be done when you become mayor of Cebu City with uh, what's going on now? How will we resurrect from the ravages of this pandemic? In fairness, I think we're starting to. No? We're st but how do we get back what we already lost? Yeah. Like many people have yeah. lost their jobs, yes, you know. Of course. How do we open that mm -hmm. without, without... You know, I don't have all the answers. Mm -hmm. I have to tell you that. I don't have the answers, all the answers. But I do know that I can depend on people I trust mm -hmm. to help me. Mm -hmm. But in the end, I make the decision, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. I haven't had to think about all of this, but now I have to. Since I'm asking you to please entrust me, mm -hmm. to me, the city, mm -hmm. I have to learn that. But off, off the tip of my you know, off the tip of my head, mm -hmm. what do I do? Mm -hmm. I, I see. All I have to do is just look at the people around me. How has it affected you? And find out. What would you, what would the first thing that you would do uh, as, as Cebu City Mayor uh, with regards to pandemic? Number one, okay. Let's be out the guys. Clean the house. Our house has to be clean. We have to clean the house. You cannot render any services if your house is not clean. What do you mean it's by not clean? In order. I'm going to ask you. Okay. Uh, what are the services that you expect at this time mm. from city, the mm. city? Are they being given? I'll ask them. Why not? There's 14 billion pesos that was left in 2019. Billion. Where is it? What did you use it for? We did have a pandemic. And it could have been used for the pandemic. Was it used for the pandemic? I asked people around. What did you get? And these are the people who have lost their jobs, their livelihood. So you will clean the house once you become yes. mayor of Cebu City, right? Yes, that's the first thing. Um, this pandemic has changed, changed everything, right? Everything. How has it changed you? It has made me more aware that I can do with much less, like many people. It has made me also be very grateful for what I have. You know, GP, all this time, it's almost it's been almost two years, yeah. right? And my small family is healthy, is well, we are safe, we are sound. We don't have to worry about what are we going to eat tomorrow. We can even choose what we want to eat, and even more. And so when people complain to me, I'm eating too much, I said, don't complain. Some people have nothing to eat. Not only that, we are given the we are given the blessings of being able to take care of the people around us, our help, their families, you know, even their families. And for those who approach us and ask for help, we can help to the extent that we can, you know, but the fact is we can help. 
So that makes me very, very grateful, really, for everything that I have. Aside from the pandemic, of course, we're going to have to go back to reality, right? All the real problems that we have, uh, all, the, all the businesses that have been ravaged by, by the pandemic. Uh, we will also have problems like the, the monsoon season is coming up, so we will have some flooding problems. The drainage. The drainage problem. The garbage. We, we will have a garbage problem. We will have a traffic problem. In fact, it's beginning uh, to uh, rear its ugly head again, like nothing happened, right, in terms of the traffic. So my question here, uh, Margot, is this. Um, uh, floods and traffic, they have a cost, right? It costs a lot of millions, if not billions, billions. Of, of, of pesos. Uh, when there's a traffic jam, when when people are stuck on the roads, there's a cost when there's there are floods, there's da damage to property and all of that stuff, right? What do, what do you think is the economic costs of of of, uh, of traffic and and floods? And what is the econo How much would, does it cost to fix those problems? You can't you can't put a cost. I cannot. Mm. I, I, mm. I I have to tell you. I, I don't know. You okay. know you can. I can say with ten billion. Mm. Still, but first, no. First, I know that this sounds. You know what you have to do mm. initially. I mean, simultaneously because mm. I cannot say let's wait until they grow up. Mm. I've been saying this since before. Mm. Why don't we teach the the, the children in school? On traffic mm -hmm. signs, okay. you know, it means do not cross. Mm -hmm. The green means go. Very simple, mm -hmm. but we take for granted. Mm -hmm. They don't do that. Mm -hmm. These are things that they they should have from childhood, so it becomes automatic. Mm -hmm. Drainage. What is the cause of drainage? Oh, there's so many causes. But again, you look at our esteros. They're filled to the brim with garbage, mm -hmm. right? So they have cleaning. Cleaning days, they're going to clean. Hello, you clean for one day, and the next day they're throwing back the garbage. So we have to teach people that it is not only a bit about us. We have to teach people that to show them that we are part of a whole community. What I do in my house affects you. Many times, even maybe I'm guilty. The help in our house. I say, where's the garbage? Oh, I'm glad there's no more garbage. Maybe they threw it over the fence, not to the... Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or they make it suk suk. Oh. You know, I remember there was one time, they checked the, um, those manholes in um, in Colon, mm -hmm. and those, whatever you call those, they were full of garbage. Mm -hmm. Because people, people forced the garbage in. Mm -hmm. Things like that. Mm -hmm. You know, billions, yes, it's... And those are only the visible causes, because when you have traffic, right? So, but, but I think it's crucial that we know what costs. Yeah. How much does it cost to fix the flooding problem? How much does it cost okay. to fix the traffic problem? You have to have yeah. a, you have to have an integrated yeah. flooding solution. Yeah. Solution. Yeah. Well, no, she can yeah. Solve. But that water has to go out somewhere, mm. and not to the next barangay, mm. because that's what happens. One barangay will fix the drainage. Hello, go to the next one. Exactly. Yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. It's got to go to the sea. Yeah. How do we do that? Yeah. There have been many. That's where my husband is me. Okay. No, really. Uh. Because he has all this and all. Some are underground. Mm. You build an underground. That's where they go. Yeah. And then eventually that ends up yeah. in the sea. Yeah. Because if you're just going to have um, culverts, and, you know, lines there it's just going to go to the next barangay correct mm. and so they're going to get flooded mm. you know these these problems that we are talking about uh traffic and uh, flooding for example uh, mayor damius many was mayor for for a long time right and these problems persist they're still here the flooding problems yeah. still around yeah uh, this has been a problem for a long long time the traffic situation is just getting worse and worse right so um what do you think will you do that he wasn't able to do? What can you do that Tommy Osmania, the mayor, uh, was not able or to do? Or the mayor now, or uh, the mayor in yeah, between. Yeah, yeah. No. What do you think will you do uh, to, you to know, give us concrete uh, direction? I, do, I cannot answer yeah, you. Yeah. I will tell you the truth. Okay. Why will I give you an answer? Yeah, of course, yeah. I, I really oh. don't know. Okay. But I will find out. Okay. And I cannot, and I will always ask those who I, in my opinion, are experts. Like, for example, mm -hmm. 
I was made to handle budget and finance. Mm. You know, Jiggy, I never took accounting in okay. school. Okay. I chose a major where I did accounting. Okay. And here I am, <laughs> budget given and budget and finance okay. of the whole city. So you learn? I had to learn. Okay. And that is one thing I'm grateful for, that even in my senior years, I can learn. Okay. You know? okay. What did I do? Uh. I went to DBM. Okay. And I would say, can I do this? How do I do this? How do I read this? Okay. Until until I look forward to it. Mm. Because when I would see numbers, it was not numbers anymore for me, but it was a story of how our city was. And this is what the city had to be able to provide mm. for the people. Mm. And how to spend that, like you said, okay, let's say we have eight billion. Mm -hmm. How much should be in drainage? Mm. How much should be in housing? How, you know, mm. right? Mm. See? That will give you a perspective when you're there. But again, here am I. I'm applying to be the, to be the mayor. I should know. I should know. Or at least I have an idea and I accept that. As of now, I cannot give you a concrete answer, but I will find out. So will you hire the best and the brightest in your team so that we can fix this problem uh, together? Uh, you know, the best and brightest is always very relative. Okay. <laughs> I will. I mean, I, I try to. Here's you know? another problem. Another you have to yeah. have, you have to have somebody who also loves Cebu City. Of course, absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Not just somebody, you know. Yeah. Can I? Can I? I know that this should become. This might become a very issue. Issue like this. controversial topic. Yeah. No, huh? but huh? yeah, because I have been asked. You know, if you're able to sit as mayor, mm. what you're just going to you're just going to do what your husband tells you. Mm. And so I can look at you straight in the eye and say, Why won't I listen to him? Mm. Of course I will listen to Tommy. Not because he's Tommy my mm. husband, but because he was the mayor. Mm. And he was a good mayor. Mm. There are many things that he did mm. that up to now are still there. Mm. You know, and he didn't do it because he wanted to leave a legacy. You know, my husband, and you would, you would, you would pardon me for this because I'm totally biased. But he truly loves Cebu. He breathes Cebu. I have never had any competition in my husband's life except Cebu City. So, what do you do? If you can't beat them, you join them, right? No, no, really. And I don't think I could get better advice. But again, back to it. But how do I do it? I do it my way. Okay. And I don't do anything I do not understand. You cannot, I cannot just hire and say the best and the brightest. And then I don't understand what you're doing. Okay. I have to understand. One of the biggest problems that's facing all the cities of the world is climate change, yeah, right? Right. Um, how do you think think uh, we will be addressing the climate issue you know, here in Cebu? Again, I will go uh, I start with the children because they have to grow up automatic to them okay. that this is a world that is going to be theirs, that is already theirs, but again you cannot wait until they grow up, right? Meanwhile, you have to do something then we go now. We have to be very strict about garbage disposal you know and like Things like that, you know. So, are there experts? Yes, there are. Yes, there are. Are there ways we can do it? Yes. You know, we started like, like the, the MR, MRF facilities, and nothing happened. Uh, Margot, um, this pandemic nobody saw coming, right? We will have more of this yes. phenomenon. I, I agree with you. In the coming years, we have to the weather conditions that we're experiencing now on this planet, in the city, the, there will be weather conditions we have never seen before. So the problems that we are facing as a species, as a city, as a people in Cebu, is enormous. And you will be uh, you applying for the job of Cebu City Mayor. Um, how can we? Uh, no. may, maybe you can give us an idea how we will do this. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. If, it's, if, if yeah, I yeah. think like that, yeah. and it's everything you're saying mm. is true, mm. and that's what's real. Mm. Like you said, let's go back to it. But if you think like that, you'll get overwhelmed. Yeah, exactly. You'll go, oh, oh no, mm. what am I getting myself into? Yeah. 
you go step by step. Okay. You see first what you have around you. You see what resources you have. You see what you don't have. You see what you can start with, you know? Because you cannot say, well, I have to wait until I can buy this or I can acquire that or I can hire this person. No, you make use of what you already have and start there. The common thread of all of your solutions, I think, is education, right? Because you're Always. For, for, for the environment, Always. for traffic, for garbage. So yeah. how, how do you intend to educate uh, Cebu? I mean, you there's... start now with the children. Yeah, but aren't they doing that in school no. already? No. Do they teach them about traffic lights? Do they teach them that when it's not the corner, you don't cross? Mm. They don't do that. Okay. Do they teach them that you're not supposed to throw? Okay, I'm going to give you an example. Okay. When my son was in school, one day he came home and said, Ma, Mama, the, they told me to tell you to tell Papa to clean the school. <laughs> I really looked at him and I said, What did they tell you? To clean your school? Imagine. Uh -huh. So you're asking me if they teach them how to clean? No. Okay. I went to the school. Okay. And I said, Can you please not do that to my son? Because, you know, when, 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 like, like when you were very young, your teacher was your madam. Mm. What madam tells you is gospel truth, mm. right? Mm. And if she tells you to tell your dad to clean the school, you will not stop until your dad cleans the school. Especially if madam doesn't stop telling you. Like, and look, man, come. You don't want to disappoint madam. Okay. I'll give, you, that, yeah, I'll give you a problem that's closer to home, closer okay. to city hall. Yeah, go. Um, there are employees there, uh, they're called casuals, I think, casuals. or who only work uh, when uh, the mayor is, you know, a certain administration, a certain no, party, and then okay. after six years, they have to be replaced, right? No, uh, no. They're, no. Uh, ca uh, they're called casuals, right? They are JOs, or JV in words. Yeah, yeah. Job orders. Job order, yeah, that's the word I was looking for, no, yeah. Job orders are called job orders because they're specific to a certain job to yeah. be done. Yeah, Meaning, there's a very, there's a definite project mm -hmm. where they have to work okay. where they need temporary um, workers mm -hmm. but once that project is completed okay. the JO's job orders they're called mm -hmm. are, are supposed also they, well there and has been their job has been completed completed okay. Wala na. but some of them have been there for a long time no, longer than way, six months that's the way of hiring okay yeah, huh? but they have no benefits. No? Okay, but isn't that unfair to those workers? Do you feel that it's unfair to them? Okay, why don't you ask them that? Okay. They'd rather have that than no job. Okay, all right. Right? Uh -huh. Now, why don't we make them casuals? Mm. Because the next step is casual. Yeah, yeah. Right? They still have to be qualified. Are they yeah. qualified? Yeah. From the casual to a regular. Mm -hmm. You know, it's very hard to become regular okay. because you have to comply with civil service, mm. which is becoming even stricter now. But don't you think, uh, Margot... Some people are casuals for 30 years. Yeah, okay. don't you think... Because uh, um, the thing with, with, with uh, working anywhere, be it in the bar, be it in City Hall, is the, the more you are in that position, the better you become at it. You just, you just become good at it. Not necessarily. Uh, generally speaking, you know, practice, correct practice makes perfect, right? So, so I'm curious about Maybe that. Maybe that's not so in government. W why do you think that that's not apply in government? Because government is like this. Especially if you're... I mean, I've seen this attitude. Not all, we have very good people in government also, but there's this attitude also like this. A kinsang mayor diha, mm. magmayor mo, mm. wala ka pa magmayor na ang nagyut ko, mm. dilit na ka mayor na pagyapun ko. Mm. Mm. So what, what what does that mean exactly? It doesn't matter. Mm. Basta you know it's good to be in government because government pays well, mm. and if you're a regular employee and you and you can retire. You have very good retirement. So we have benefits. their attitudes uh, are, are sometimes. So can we it's change? Like can we change that? Can you change that uh, when you become mayor? Good luck. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> you live with it and you try to make the best out of it. Okay. You cannot change them. You cannot change them. Change your attitude. Uh -huh. Not not that you have to condone them. But are, use them. But aren't they a great disservice to Not Cebu? really, not always. Not naman always. I won't say that. I will never generalize, okay. Jigger. I will never generalize that you're all casuals, you're all bad, or you're all... No. You have to look at each and every person. You know, okay, I, I was manager of a bank 
of three branches of the bank. And I had the, the ano, to hire and to fire. It's very hard to fire. Why? Because I really believe that, let's say you're working in the bank and you're just not, it's just not working out. So I have to tell you, but you know what? It doesn't mean that you're a bad person. It's just that the bank is not the place for you yeah. to right. yeah. so can't you, say you that? can shine. Can't you say that to those employees that, no. that you're you saying? No, you can transfer that to another department. Okay. You try. Okay. Yeah. See, that's what I mean. Don't, don't, I will never say you're bad mm. or you're no good. Mm. No, maybe maybe that's not the job for you. No? Why don't they transfer you here? Mm. Right? Yeah. Like that. It's okay. like me. Okay. okay. Jiggy, mm, no. I can read. I'm, I'm, I'm obviously I'm a literate person. I can read. I can write. Because of that, I can read a recipe. Because I can read a recipe, you can say I can cook. Okay. Now, can I cook well? Definitely not. <laughs> okay. Because I don't have the heart for it. Okay. I don't like it. Okay. I really don't like cooking. If I have to starve, I'll starve. I'll buy. It. See, but that's what I mean. Everybody has his own or her own role to play. And given the opportunity, and yeah, and as long as also the person is willing, he or she will shine. See, that's why I So you have to make like a climate that allows that, right? Yeah, yeah. And you can start setting the pace. Now, some people get it and some people don't, but that's not your problem anymore. As I was describing to you my doomsday scenario, right? how terrible yeah, you're very things doomsday. are. Um, <laughs> you, you, your our our uh, ability to make mistakes, uh, our allowances to make mistakes are very small now because the challenges that we are we are facing are so um, no. great, right? So I think it's crucial that uh, the city clicks in all cylinders that you, as mayor of Cebu, will be the conductor of, of a symphony that will make Cebu, uh, you know, or, or yeah, but hopefully not right so no, the, the, the allowance for mistakes so. are, are pretty low now uh, i don't know about that you know as long as you learn and that's the mistake if your mistake will affect you only mm -hmm. then then that's okay yeah. okay pa, yeah. but really you're right there in the sense that if your your mistakes as in government will not affect you personally but the whole people you are supposed to serve mm -hmm. then then, if you're elected, they will not vote for you the next step. Okay. That's the thing about elected okay. as versus career. Okay. So what's the first thing that you will do? I you said clean, clean the, the house. house. That's the first thing you will do? So you will put the house in order, as you said, right? Let's go to another topic before we wrap this up. Um, we've been talking for such a long time now. Sorry, Margaret. I can talk I, with I, you I am, I am very intrigued uh, by this conversation that we're having. You mentioned earlier in the beginning of our conversation that uh, uh, your father-in-law, Sir Hing, was uh, part of the Miranda bombing. Yeah. Uh, this was the time when martial... Just before martial law was declared. A year before. A year before. And he was... Uh, Exiled or he escaped the prison? No, no, it's of, like this. Uh, because he went to the States mm. for a checkup, uh -huh. and then while he was there, uh -huh. in ten, after 10 days, I think, uh -huh. uh, it, the martial law was declared, he couldn't come back. Okay, so there was like a travel ban for. for no, the travel ban was a ban going out. Going out of the but country, he, yeah? He, he risked, the, the, he risked, the, he risked yeah. being, being uh, arrested. Okay. I think they had. I think they had charges. So you, him. you, uh, yourself, Tami, um, Sir Hing saw uh, what martial law did, yes. right? And my, 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 my brother-in-law was in jail. Yeah. Serge. Yeah, of course. For seven years. Yeah. And all of these things going on in, yes. in the country, right? Yes. And Cebu uh, City was a, a very, uh, you know, when Edsa Revolution happened, you know, Korea Kino came here. She was and, here. And she, I think, uh, went to the the, the Carmelites. The Carmelites, right? And she uh, hid somewhere here in, in, in Cebu. So Cebu City was such a... Uh, opposition. A, 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 has always been an opposition, right? I mean, Cebu City is almost like the pulse of the Philippines, right? So it was a very, um, I would say, a very pro-Aquino, anti-Marcos uh, city back then, back in the 80s, right? So um, you... I wasn't here, remember? Yeah, yeah. We were in the States. Back in, but, but I'm talking about after the revolution, you know. Yeah, uh, when we came back. You know, Cory yeah. Aquino got oh, a lot, yeah. lot of votes here in Cebu. And, and all that, his, his uh, son, Pinoy, got a lot of votes here in Cebu as well. But 
things have changed dramatically, right? From being a pro Aquino anti Marcos city, we have become almost we've completely forgotten the ravages of martial law, the all the injustices Just that like happened. You, were you born? I was. I'm a martial law baby, so I was born in '72. So what do you think happened? Can you can you explain to us what is going on now in Cebu City? People forget, and then you know there's now social media. Mm -hmm. We didn't have social media before. Mm -hmm. People, many people who suffered, were tortured, mm -hmm. and have died. Mm -hmm. Their families maybe don't forget, mm -hmm. of course, mm -hmm. but they're dwindling in number. But it doesn't erase the fact that these things happen. Mm -hmm. I don't want to get into this, um, you know, they're bad people. But the facts remain facts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> these things happen. We know of people who were tortured and killed, mm. Mm. right? Mm. So that cannot be erased. Mm. Um, why are these things, why does it seem that there's a blur about this? Mm. So what they call about re re revision? Revisionist, you know? yeah. Revisionist. Uh. Because, of, because it's possible mm. now. It's possible in social media. It's possible to revise what happened? Obviously, it's happening, okay. right? Uh -huh. It's not only possible, it is happening okay. to many people. Mm -hmm. They don't know. I mean, they talk of the, they talk of martial law as the golden era. Mm -hmm. What was it golden for? Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. We ended up owing more money than we ever owed. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. They don't see that. Mm -hmm. Because, because, remember, I you were like, you're a baby. Mm -hmm. But when it was martial law, everything was annoying, orderly. Mm -hmm. Siyempre, you're so scared, mm -hmm. di ba? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was orderly, it seemed peaceful, especially if you were in the city. Seemed peaceful? To us, oh, yeah. to me it was peaceful. Uh -huh. I mean, I didn't see people being shot in the streets, uh -huh. right? Not in Manila, uh -huh. Uh -huh. But, you knew, but you heard of these things. And because I knew of some people who, they were tortured and killed. Mm -hmm. See? Mm -hmm. So, do you feel a certain sense of responsibility to remind them of that? Or is it is it is it bygones? Let bygones be bygones. No, 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 not let bygones. But I am not going to be the nagger. Okay, that will come. That will come. You know, you can only erase some, but it will. You cannot erase the fact, the facts of what actually happened to you. Do, will I make it my mission in life to say, no, that's not true, that this is really what happened? No. I have other things to do, okay? I have more productive things to do, but that will not be for that. I don't, you know, sometimes it's not so good. I don't dwell. I don't get stuck. And um, I really like to move forward. And I, I really, maybe I'm... What's the word? <laughs> I always see the bright side, okay. and I always try to see what's good. Mm. But there's some yeah. there no good, okay? <laughs> no matter how hard you look. But I will not make it a mission to show how bad it is. Okay. Because being bad, I still truly believe that good will always triumph over evil. Call it naivete, so be it. Okay. But whatever it is, that's me. My dots are starting to connect, like okay. I was saying earlier. That I, I now realize that hey, this thing happened to me, that's why pala, because now I'm going to be doing this. I never knew why I did that before. I thought it was just out of the, but now I'm doing this. So the dots are starting to connect. And there are not going to be too many dots left. Whatever dots I have left, I will, like I said, I have very much less to look forward to as far as years are concerned than to look back at. But whatever there is left ahead, I hope to be productive. And whatever I can do to help, and if I can do it now, I will not hesitate. Okay, this is my second to the last question. Um, for decades now, there have only been two, three families that have been ruling Cebu. There are the Osmenias, the Garcias, and Rama. You know, and then, of course, La Bella, just fairly recently. Uh, but uh, that's probably a... Uh, I, 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 I was How not, do you feel about that? How I do you was feel? not born in Osmania. Yeah. I married yeah. an Osmania. Yeah. And if I, again, I may say so, I married the best Osmania. Uh -huh. But I have never heard them say that, uh -huh. that we rule Cebu. In fact, 
when it was being told to them, they said, we don't rule Cebu. Cebu doesn't love us, we love Cebu. Yeah, but, that's what they, but, but I, if, that's your, if that's the way you think about it, then that's your thinking. But they have never thought that way. Well, what I'm trying to say is, um, why do you think that is the case? Why because are there only few families that are ruling Cebu for, for decades now? Why can't we come up with with a different name you, every you, now and then? You, you tell me why. Oh. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know also. I mean, Tommy did not make it in the last election. Okay. So how, why is it that that's still that the opinion, okay. right? All right, yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah, correct, yeah. Lito is gone. Yeah. Sunny is gone. Yeah. So, I mean, so I'm around. Yeah. I mean, hello. I'm, yeah. Yeah, but to, to think that there is... No. You yeah. okay. know, they never... Look at it. There was one time, I am told, some years ago, look at Cebu, what, what is named on Osmeña, Osmeña Boulevard. Mm -hmm. But you don't see Osmeña this, Osmeña that, you know, like in other places. Mm -hmm. You don't see an Osmeña city, mm -hmm. you don't see an Osmeña town, mm -hmm. when at one time, even their grandfather didn't want anything named after him. Okay, let me rephrase the question. Do you think it's healthy, do you think it's good? That there are other names that will also uh, as long as they deserve yeah, it. Yeah. Why are those so do you, you think you think it's uh, it's healthy for the city? To what? To have a, maybe anybody, a, yeah, anybody, yeah. anybody, okay. anybody, anybody has the right. Mm -hmm. Anybody, yeah, anybody has the right, and if they want to see it as the responsibility mm -hmm. to do what they can. Mm -hmm. Now again, it's the people who will choose. decide. Yeah, I cannot say I want to go. I want to be the mayor. I'll go not to city hall. I'll sit down now. Mm -hmm. No. That's why, again, I go back to that. You know, you, you, you exert effort so that people will choose you. Mm. So when, when, if and when they choose you, do not complain. Mm. Mm. Do not complain about politics. And again, I will say this. Politics does not define me, mm. nor does it define my husband. Hopefully, mm. what we put into politics is who we are. Aside, uh, aside, politics is not my life. It is something I choose to do. But should it not choose me, I still have a life. <laughs> so, um, we have hopefully thousands of uh, viewers uh, watching this podcast right now. Uh, what is your, what is the Margot Vargas Osmeña pitch to the Cebuanos? Like to be your mom. <laughs> That's it. I'm an alternative. Okay. Uh, you have a choice, and of course, it's up to you. That's it. God bless you. Always God bless you and guides you. <laughs> wow! Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, and everyone in between. Margot Osmeña. Thank you so much, Margot. You're I, amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're off now. I cannot say that. You choose.